Let's have a look at my project, the ESP8266 as a Wi-Fi repeater or a Wi-Fi range extender, or to put it correctly, as a Wi-Fi NAT router. As we all know, the ESP can work as a Wi-Fi station and as a Wi-Fi access point, a soft access point at the same time. Here we have a typical setup where the ESP is connected as a station to an access point with the SSID Fastnet and itself has a soft access point with the SSID ESP. The access point has the IP address 192.168.178.1 and the ESP has the access point the access point of the ESP has the address 10.0.1.1. When the connections are set up, the stations are configured via the DHCP protocol. So the ESP as a station of the external access points gets the IP address 192.168.178.1. And the connected station uh, to the soft IP of the ESP receives the IP 10.0.1.2. Now both sides can communicate with each other. The access point and the ESP can talk to each other as well as the ESP and the station. The problem is that there is currently no communication between the station and the access point. To fix that, we need two things. Most importantly, we need routing. So we have to set up the ESP in the middle as an IP router. That is in fact not a big problem as IP routing is a compile time option in the TCP IP stack of the ESP. So when routing is switched on, packets are forwarded in both directions so that packets from the station are forwarded to the access point and the other way around. However, the problem is that both sides, the network at the access point side and the station, have to know about the other networks and it requires special entries in their routing tables to get this working. This is not a real problem, but it's inconvenient and especially in a dynamic environment, you do not want to uh, configure it all the time. So what is much more convenient is a so-called so NAT router. NAT means network address translation. This means that the ESP in the middle, the NAT router, is more or less a proxy that translates uh, IP addresses and port numbers from the one side to the other side so that the whole network behind the ESP where the station is appears to be uh, one single station of the ESP to the outside network. This means this internal network is completely transparent to the rest of the world. We all know uh, this idea from the common home, rou home routers that work exactly in the same way. What is still required is some access to the DNS, the domain name system of the internet for the station behind the ESP. In a normal NAT case, one would implement a DNS server on the NAT router. And in this case, it has to forward the DNS requests to the outside world. Here we know about a DNS server, which is on the access point. So it is easier to distribute the IP address of that server to all the stations as DNS responder, so that all DNS requests are passed through the ESP and right to the access point. This is also completely transparent to all applications and the network configuration, and it's distributed via DHCP. As a special feature, our NAT router has a monitoring capability, which means we can set up a special TCP port 
that mirrors all the traffic between the ESP and the stations to an external monitor. This monitor should be located in the external network, otherwise it would observe its own network traffic, which of course ends in an endless loop. So here we have put the monitor in the external network and it receives all the traffic between the ESP and all its stations in real time via the TCP connection in PCAP format. PCAP format is used by common tools like the Wireshark and it's easy to analyze and filter traffic afterwards once you have it stored in this format. Of course, this setup is security sensitive as you can monitor all the traffic that your or other stations might have via the access point. And this is why it's a useful debugging tool for many cases where you don't have access to the network traffic. Just put an ESP in between, use the monitoring capability and you can intercept and observe all the packets that go in and out, for example, your smartphone, your IoT device, or even your laptop. Now let's have a look at the real hardware. Here we have my development board connected via serial, but only for flashing and for power supply. Configuration can be done wirelessly. We connect to the default SSID of the ESP, which is the MyAP, and then we can connect to the console via Telnet to the port 777. And we'll get a command line interface where we can look at the current configuration. This is the default configuration with the SSID and password set to more or less nonsense values. We can reconfigure it using the command line, set SSID, set password, and we can also reconfigure the AP parameters, in our case, as the proposed ESP as SSID, and another more or less stupid password. Actually, I've forgotten here to uh, set the uh, open to zero, so this will still be an open SSID, but for demo purposes is okay. But we reconfigure the network to a 10.0.1.0 network, so just to see that it can be reconfigured. And there we go, we save and we reset the ESP and it boots up with the new parameters. I've built several prototypes. You have seen the one on the ESP12, but of course it also works on an ESP1 as it doesn't need much more than a serial connection for flashing and for debugging perhaps, and uh, one LED as status LED. Here we use an ESP1 module with the built-in blue status. We connect it to a power bank and this works for several hours now. Now the LED is blue and as soon, as soon as it starts blinking, it has the uplink. Now it's connected to the uh, uplink AP and it's ready for uh, connection to for stations. Here we have another prototype. It has, it uses a battery and it uh, uh, has an external uh, yellow status LED. We also plug in here um, ESP1 module, we switch it on, the LED is shining and now we wait for the, yeah, that it's already blinking and it has uplink and it's ready to go. And now we want to have a look on the monitoring feature of the ESP repeater. Therefore, we go into the telnet again, into the configuration, we look into the current status. We see one station is already connected. That's already, it's actually my smartphone and some packets already have been exchanged. I switch on the monitoring on the port 8888. It says it's running on port 8. Now I switch over to 
um, a root shell where we have a netcat and we put this into the standard input of a wireshark and we start it this error message is normal and now we see there is some traffic coming in as soon as I touch my smartphone there it is you see the packets displayed in real time and actually it comes in even more traffic if I open a an app with uh, it's actually it's a weather app it shows uh, the current weather and a uh, lots of advertisements and now for example you can use this monitoring feature to figure out to whom your application is talking all the time so I pick a DNS packet and I set a filter on DNS it's the port 53 and I filter out all DNS requests and here we go we have all the DNS requests of the last seconds and there you see all the sites that my app is connecting just to get a little bit of weather information this is a nice application of my ESP repeater if you'd like to try this on your own ESP or if you have another good idea of what a Wi-Fi repeater could do for you then go and find the code on github you can find it at ESP Wi-Fi repeater at the link below. Thank you for watching.